This is the Spotify car thing. And it's a good little device with some good little ideas, but was unfortunately released a little too late for a little bit too much money. And well, it didn't do that great. So Spotify discontinued it. And even worse, they're going to brick it later this year. If you wanna know more about that, check out my video I already did on this subject. But one thing I've been working on since then is a DIY Spotify car thing. And that's a little more difficult than I hoped. I'm still working on that, so subscribe to the channel if you wanna see when that does eventually happen. But along the way, I discovered another project, except this one's for your desk, and it's actually really awesome. But unfortunately, it was broken and not working. So I fixed it. This is a DIY Spotify desk thing that displays your album art on a color e-ink display. It's really kind of awesome. It actually features working buttons at this point and uses a 3D printed case that my wife designed. I'm gonna make all the code available for free plus the STL for this case and I'm gonna show you how to build one yourself. I do need to throw out a thanks to Ryan Ward, the original creator of this concept. Go check out his video if you want to. And Gappa Joe, who did some work on getting it working a little better. I'm just coming in at the end and delivering kind of a finalized concept in a way. Let's head to my office and set one up. Okay, so to get started, you're gonna need a few things. You'll need the Pimerani display. I have a few other options in the code as well. However, if you want my 3D printed case to go with this, that's specifically designed for this Pimerani Inky Impression 5.7 inch display. You'll also need a Raspberry Pi 02W. I suggest you get them with GPIO pins already installed, unless you're comfortable installing them for yourselves. I'll link both ways, including a kit that helps you install GPIO pins. That'd be more expensive up front, but could save you money down the line. And of course, you'll need a micro SD card, the case that you 3D print, and a power cord. The very first thing you're gonna do is set up the micro SD card. So let's get started on that. So to get the micro SD card set up, you're gonna need a piece of software that's free from Raspberry Pi. That is called Raspberry Pi Imager. And you just launch that. You're gonna choose the device. And of course, we're doing a Raspberry Pi 02W. Choose your OS. We're gonna do Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit. And choose the storage. And of course, choose your micro SD card. Click next. Now we're gonna go in here and edit some settings real quick to make life easier. You wanna go ahead and create a username and password for logging in. We're gonna call this e-ink for the username. And I'm just gonna set it as whatever I want, I'm not telling you, for the password. You probably saw that anyways. Set up your Wi-Fi while you're at it. It will make your life a lot easier. And come into services and enable SSH. This is gonna also make life easy. Save. Click yes, click yes, and let that write for a while. And when it's done, we'll move on. Okay, once it finishes writing and verifying that write, it will automatically eject the SD card for you. So we can, at this point, put all the hardware together. Now an e-ink display doesn't work like a traditional display. You can't get a OS view from it. We'll have to do everything else through terminal, but I'll walk you through that too. And if you like written instructions, I've got all those on GitHub. I'll have the links to everything you need to know down below. Let's put the hardware together. Okay, so now that it's ejected the SD card, we can take that out and we can put the SD card in the Raspberry Pi. Now, once you have that in, we can attach it to the Pimorani display. You'll notice the GPIO pins fit right here. You wanna be very careful as you attach this. You're gonna be tempted to push right in the middle and only the middle of this display, but it's fragile glass, so you don't wanna do that. Hold from the sides and maybe use one finger at the middle at most. Line everything up. See, I've got how my fingers are all the way across for even pressure, and then push with your thumbs while holding with your fingers to keep it from breaking. And that's lined. Now, to make things a little easier, we're gonna set this off to the side for the moment. And we're gonna go ahead and take the, the micro USB cord that powers the whole device and feed it through the back of the case. This will just make things a little bit easier down the road. Then we can go ahead and plug it into the Raspberry Pi. And we can add the buttons. They just slip right in. Once you have the buttons in, the display will just slip right in and notice the buttons rest right up against the display buttons. And then the case back will slip 
in as well. Now this is a little tight. It is a friction fit, which means you won't need any other hardware. It'll just kind of pop into place. And we're done building the hardware. Now, if you're wondering, yes, this isn't the default screen that comes with this display. I've already tested everything and made sure it's working. So now we can plug in the display and work on getting set up the software. The other thing we need to do is create a new application with the Spotify developer dashboard. Now I've already done this previously, but you'll create an account and then you'll hit create app. You give the app a name like Anna Raker's amazing ink device, whatever description you want. And here's the important part. You need to redirect URI. You're going to set that to localhost redirect. Check web API, web playback API, and you won't need Android ads or iOS. And keep in mind, you must have a Spotify premium account for this to work. And click I understand the group Spotify is delivers, etc. So now that you've had that set up, you're going to set up a terminal and connect to your Raspberry Pi. You'll use the command SSH space the username that you created during that setup process at the IP address for your Raspberry Pi. You'll need to get that from your router. I won't know it. Then you're going to get this little message right here. You'll say yes. Then you need to provide your password that you set and you're in. And now we can start our download script. So we'll start with, with this wget command here. Place that in and hit enter, and it will download the setup command. We also need this separate command here. This just makes the setup.sh file we just downloaded have the necessary permissions to then set up the Raspberry Pi. And then we're gonna install it. So we use a bash command to run our setup file that we just downloaded and just let it work it's magic. Now it is going to prompt you for a few choices a little down the road. So keep an eye on things. It'll eventually work its way through the script and it'll ask you to enter your Spotify client ID. So we're going to head back to that Spotify app we created and your client ID will be in the top left. Just hit that copy button and paste it in. It's going to ask for your Spotify client secret. That's hidden by default. So you're going to hit this view client secret. Copy that. You'll notice the blur. I'm not giving you mine. P paste it. Your Spotify redirect URI, which is down here. This one you're going to have to highlight and copy and paste. Your Spotify username. Now, this part's a little bit more difficult. You're going to, hit, you're going to copy this URL right here. You're going to open up a new tab and paste it in. And you'll get taken to this weird 404 page not found. That's okay. You're going to copy that whole URL and paste it back into terminal. From here, we're going to select which display we're using. I have the 5.7 inch inky impression, so I'm going to hit three and then enter. And your setup is complete. So now you can open up Spotify and start playing a song. And you might have to reboot the Raspberry Pi. I've had that happen occasionally, but let's see what happens. And there we go. It has started working. Now this flashing you're seeing right now is normal. Uh, unfortunately, color e-ink displays require more refreshes in order to fully wipe the screen and show what's next. It's the current limitation of color e-ink. There's nothing we can do about that. Uh, black and white e-ink would, would refresh faster, but it wouldn't look anywhere near as good. The first time you do this, it will take longer. But after that, it should take about 30 seconds. And our code is pretty quick to spot song changes. So within usually a second or two of the song changing, you'll get the next album started refreshing. And there we go. Now it's working. Your top button is next track. Your second button is previous track. Third button is play and pause. Notice it's flashing. And button D will actually switch playlists for you. Now, it's a random playlist of among all your playlists. I can't give you more control than that. And there you have it. 
a Spotify e-ink display. It's all pretty awesome actually. And I wanna again, throw a shout out to Ryan Ward and Gabba Joe who did a lot of the early work on this. I'm coming in at the end and kind of completing some code and adding a fancy case. Fancy. You can find all the instructions below along with a free STL to print this out yourself. You'll notice it's on a bamboo site, but you can download an STL from that as well. If you have a bamboo printer, it'll be even easier for you. It's kind of all preset. That's it for now. I hope you enjoy this. Let me know in the comments below if you made one. I'd love to see pictures of everyone else's as well. And until next time, bye.